So this tutorial is sponsored by NVIDIA and they wanted me to tell you about why you should consider switching to RTX hardware if you haven't already. And I want to tell you a bit about my experience with RTX. This year and four months ago, I upgraded to an RTX card and I actually used it for a few weeks without enabling RTX acceleration. And NVIDIA now make drivers, they're called studio drivers, which are meant for artists. So we're not arbitrarily using cards that are indirectly meant for us when really they're meant for uh, other uses. And when I got the RTX card, I tested it on Octane Bench, as you do, and it scored 195. And I was disappointed with that. And then I turned on RTX Acceleration and it scored 648. That was three and a half times faster just by turning something on. NVIDIA sent me a laptop. I've been using it for the past week and it's uh, been amazing. It has an RTX 280 in it. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, an i7 12 core processor. It's absolutely packed and it's been brilliant to be rendering on. I've had a lot of fun with it and we're going to be doing a tutorial on it today. I'm going to be making some awesome terrains. I'm going to see how they come out and it's been a big luxury to be able to render anywhere where I want. It's been a lot of fun. And of course, these cards, they're meant for me, they're meant for you, they're meant for 3D artists. And I'm a big believer on no amount of hardware ever making you a better artist because the paintbrush doesn't use you. But it can certainly help, especially with the amount of strain we tend to put on our computers doing the renders that we do. And the NVIDIA Studio certified products go through a lot of testing to make sure they're suitable for us as artists. And if you are interested in checking out more about that, there's a link in the description where you can go. And with that being said, let's get into the tutorial. This is an 8K terrain I made in the World Machine and it will be available on my store. I bet it's a really nice terrain, actually. I did a good job with this one. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna set up a render sounds a nice square. Only do 1080p. Switch to path tracing. And the first thing I'm going to do to start building this terrain is I'm going to get a camera way above. And of course, if we are doing a realistic landscape, first of all, it's not going to be however big this is. And what we can do is use a cube for reference. Now, generally when you're scaling up things, just a little trick for you, just kind of scale it up and keep stopping and scaling up and then it'll get quicker each time. And we can just delete that cube and get rid of it. And, uh, and as you can see now, it's looking a bit more. Realistic. Now, if we were to get a realistic shot like this nowadays, it would be done by a drone. I don't know if a drone would get up this high, a helicopter or something. So you'd maybe want to go very big lens, something like 300, I think. You'd probably find someone using at this kind of distance. Of course, I'm going to do the almighty control S. Uh, we'll just call this. And I'm going to light this with a daylight because, well, it's a terrain, and we need a daylight. I really like a sunset vibe with terrains, and that makes them look white almighty. So, our shadows to a place that we like. <laughs> do you like seeing my face, by the way, in the tutorials? Yes, we do. I'm pretty. Okay, so we'll get an octane camera tag on there, and then we'll come to our post-processing, and we'll add a little bit of bloom. Every render needs bloom, you bet. Armor Imager, and we'll come back to that later. I kind of also want to show that you don't need all the assets in the world to create beautiful looking renders. And, you know, your art is what matters, not how you make it. And you don't need all the most expensive assets and the best assets, you just need your brain. And my assets. <laughs> I'm probably going to swap this to glossy because I think. Especially when you're dealing with snow. I put a little bit of kind of like snow in parts of this. With snow, it's not diffused and neither is rock the way it hits it. And I just found that after doing so many terrains, you get much more realistic look if you let Octane think that it's glossy. Even if it's the most dry rock ever, you're going to get a more realistic result from the light hitting it as glossy. With high roughness, of course, you don't want it shiny. I'm just going to pop in the color map I made here which, if you ask me, was a very nice colour map. Stick that on our terrain. <laughs> look at Look at it! I mean, look at that! <laughs> and then I'll speed up this process, because it's boring. You don't want to see that. 
I mean, I'm just plugging in bump maps. I mean, if you don't know how to do that, it might be quite interesting. But this is the magnificent bump map. Bump map. Bump map. Plug that in the bump map. <laughs> then we'll get our heat map. Because heat maps are very good. Last minute. And. You see, I have such a weird accent to the rest of the world that when I say things like this, people are just going to think this is how I pronounce it. I probably shouldn't do that. I'm going to give Scotland a bad name. Put that in there. And don't worry, we're not going to use it. We're going to use like 0.5. It's just to get a little bit more detail on top of the bump. It kind of flushes things out there a little bit. 5. And for now, 4K will do. You can go to 8K for the final render. Okay, so next up, we're going to go back to that glossy thing I said. And we're going to pop the material and make it glossy. And then we'll go to our roughness. And I'll let you see how shiny it goes because it just gave me fireflies. Waiting for Joel Miller to come through the door and tackle me. <laughs> okay, so next up, I'm going to change the lighting because 10 minutes ago, I said that I liked the sunset thing and now I've decided I don't. So. <laughs> spin this around. Who else drinks four cups of coffee a day? Is that just me? I, I kind of feel like it's just me. Is that anybody else or is it just me? I'm going to duplicate my camera and I'm going to get a nice part of the terrain because this terrain has a nice floor to it. I put a lot of displacement in it. So if we get a bit, that's kind of going with that flow like that. And then I'm going to come into our daylight and I'm going to bring down, or should I bring up the size? No, I'm going to bring it down because I want really sharp shadows. And I'm just going to play with my offset until I get shadows that I like. I am going to make the sky color pink. And maybe bring up turbidity a bit. Turbidity. Okay, now I'm going to flatten this image for our grading. And I think I should make a tutorial about grading because I think grading is an entirely different thing to photography in the 3D world. But generally, I tend to flatten out my images. So if you're kind of wondering what I mean by that, I just think like this. A little bit of that. I mean, it's just like setting your exposure in camera, really. There's um, no reason you should be leaving your settings the way they are. If your images are getting blown out in real life, when you're dealing with things like the sun, you cannot say, hey, sun, I'm going to dial you down a little bit. You're blowing out my picture too much. You can't do that. You've got to bring down that ISO. You've got to make the changes in camera, and you're going to get more realistic results if you do that here too. Maybe. I don't know. And the terrain's looking good. This is a really easy render to set up. I don't have any VDBs here, but of course, if I was on my normal machine, I would just have a big cloud here for no reason. So I'm going to duplicate the camera again, and we're just going to get another nice angle. I think this time I'm actually going to break our 90 degree kind of... Ow! I'm kind of liking this. There's a lot of detail here, actually. I don't realize how much detail I put in it. I suppose that's the beauty of using an 8K... Hang up. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Works pretty good if you ask me. And you know, those super close ups of animals, that are like a 600 mil lens, you could always go for one of them. That looks really good. So, what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to F2 here. And I'm going to try and get the, the sunset thing again because I've decided I like it again. So we've kind of got that pink sunset over here in Scotland. We get a lot of these really nice um, pink sunsets, which look awesome. And I'm just going to kind of that work. The lower we get the sun, the more the pink's going to come out. One last thing we could do is we could add some fog. And if you wanted to ever do that, you just go to your medium on your daylight or your HDRI. Of course, I've not got one here. And you just grab a scanning medium, stick a few RGB spectrums in here. Just like that. And you just want to bring down your density. And now you have a little bit of fog. Makes it more realistic. Personally, I think it can take away some of the contrast. But it adds a nice little haze and absolutely triples your render speed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to render all these out in 4K and I will grade them and they will be on the screen and you can see them. Once again, you can get this terrain on my self I store. Of course, you can see that was an 8K displacement map, an 8K terrain, and the laptop has not peeped. Most people's machines cannot run 8K. So to say that I'm doing that on something that's as thin as my phone, 
is absolutely crazy. It is an amazing laptop and Nvidia did me a crazy one by sending me this.